my name is Jo. In my head, this is kind of how I sound. I think clearly. I remember all of my medical studies. The voice in my head speaks like anyone else. But this is not my voice. It's a narrator's. Four years ago, my life changed forever. An arterial venous malformation in my brain burst. It happened just after Connor's fourth birthday. What do you remember of when the hemorrhage happened? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Joe was at work and I got a call from one of Joe's colleagues uh, that she'd something had happened um, with her brain and to rush out to Middlemore. Got there and, and pretty much immediately I was told that um, it was a cerebral hemorrhage. At that stage they said there's about a 50% chance that she'll even make it to surgery, so sort of prepare yourself for the worst. For the first three or four days, Jo barely had any consciousness. She was coming to very briefly in, in critical care. Between day four and day six, she started to get more and more conscious and more and more understanding of, of everything. Um, and it was pretty clear that she wasn't going to be able to speak and that her right side was completely paralysed. I'd, I'd sort of managed to come to grips with those things and sort of, in my head, had, had traded them off for her life um, and felt like that they, those were things we could deal with, given the fact that she was alive. Say hi for the camera, JJ. She knows exactly in, in a certain part of her brain what she wants to say. However, to be able to sort of um, turn that into, into words, um, there are a couple of major blocks. The first one is apraxia or dyspraxia, which is basically the mind being able to control her mouth to make the sound she wants to make. So when you see her stumbling over a word and, and trying to find that consonant sound, being able to do that at the right times is, just sort of evades her. The other thing that happens is she's suffering from aphasia, which is a sort of jumbling up of the signals as they come through what was a speech centre. It might be sort of like someone with dyslexia where the letters get twisted up and she sort of, sort of can't put them into the right order. So frustration is the main thing with that perfect thinking going on and absolute comprehension of, of what she wants to say but not able to do any output. What's it like? Is it like you've got the word on the tip of your tongue but you can't get it out? No. Is it like you know the feeling but you can't find yeah, the word? Yeah, yeah. Mm. You have to be so patient. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> oh. <sighs> oh. You want space? No. Speak? Yeah. So, do you still remember and know all you learned about haematology? 
Yes, yes. You know it all? Yes, yes. Can you tell me about the years you've spent studying? Um, uh, three, uh, no, uh, sleep was, yes, uh, gra uh, doctor, yes. Six years to become yeah. a doctor. Yes. Two years, um, house surgeon? Yes. Five. Six, five, and two? Yes. Thirteen years? Yes. She is such an amazing thinker and academic. The biggest worry of all is Joe's loss of identity. A lot of the identity is wrapped up in, in being a doctor. I love Mama. Yeah. Yeah. I've always been very proud of you because you always surprise me. <laughs> <laughs> when you were nine months old, you were diagnosed with a, a clicky hip. You are in a plaster cast for six months. And then when the plaster cast came off, you are about 18, 19 months old. You walked within three weeks. And, and the one thing that you showed then was a lot of tenacity and determination. You beat the odds. That's what you do. You beat the odds. You've got, you've got strength. You've got tenacity, you've got determination, um, and, and you will, you will do it. You will overcome it. The dream was to have a conversational English yeah. by the end of the first year yeah. and then in the second year work on your academic yeah. language. Yeah. yeah. Isn't quite yeah. further back, you think, than yeah. thought it would be. Yeah. 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 Physically as well, Joe. Yeah. What's um how do you what's going on with that at the moment? What do you what are the limitations? Hands. Hands? Yeah. Good. Well, yeah. Well said. yeah. You thought you'd be further along with that. Yeah. What, what's that going to stop you doing? Playing golf? No. You couldn't play golf before, <laughs> Jay. Is stuff at home that you can't do? No, no. Work? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Like doing procedures? Yeah, yeah. You need a lot of strength to do a bone marrow? Yeah, and yeah. Yeah? Uh, oh, well. Yeah. Don't, don't you look, look for an excuse to get out of those? Do you give you opportunity anyway? No. Oh. Just for daddy? No. Okay. Right. Joe and I were always really good communicators. Mm -hmm. On the strengths of our relationship, we always talked a huge amount. And I know her really, really well, and I usually know what she's roughly thinking about, which means I can usually tease out the point. All right. How do I, Joe? Okay, sweetie, lie down. Lie down, Connor. How do you feel when when I've got to step in and do the communication yeah, yeah. for you? Yeah. Feels like it's been the longest time. No, no, no. Eh? Longest. Yeah. Two. Yeah. Are you saying I don't like it? No. No. Is that the word like? Yeah. Are you saying are you trying to say what it's like? No. Are you you hope to be not? Needing me by two years, you're yeah, hoping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the goal. Yeah. Yeah, we always had two years in mind for you yeah. to be able to yeah. speak relatively comfortably in conversation and stuff. Eh? Yeah. Ooh. Go. God. To. Seek. No. Kana. Chang up. To. Sleep. No. Kana. Yes. Good. Good. I understand. I don't understand. Everything. 
thing. Yes. You yeah. Can you try it on your own. Av, your. Ev. What's understated sometimes is that effort that goes into communication. And um, for Jo, even when she needs to try and articulate any sounds or words, that requires a conscious effort to think of where she's going to position that, her lips, tongue, to be able to produce those words. So everything's, I mean, that's from my opinion, I think yeah. it requires concentration and effort, and that's what then results in the fatigue. Compared to studying haematology, which I imagine is pretty difficult, how hard is what you're going through now? Mm. No. Much harder? Yeah. We have to be quite careful of not comparing Joe and Connor because I think there's a massive difference between someone who's acquiring language for the first time and someone like Joe who has that the issue of having the word there in her mind but not being able to make her mouth physically make her mouth say it. to his learning. Oh, kind kinda want to yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. You want to tell him things? Yeah. Joe's always been just, just one of the strongest people I know and one of the most, I, just, I, I love her for being a powerful woman and it's one of the reasons I fell in love with her and this takes, takes so much of that away. involve me nagging you, don't they, to, yeah. to hurry up. Pretty typical. Yeah. Wanting to make sure I get out the door fast enough to get to work. Yeah. For the first six months after Joe's cerebral hemorrhage, I wasn't working because I was still on a year's paternity leave looking after Connor. I guess we never imagined that I would be the one going to work and Joe would be the one at home um, looking after Connor a bit and, and doing all of her classes the rest of the time because the plan was always for Joe to be working and for me, me to be the one um, doing the primary kind of childcare stuff. Yeah, it's a little bit um, different from how we pictured it. I mean, Joe's career has always been the, the dominant, most important career in, the, in, in our family, so that kind of had to shift out a little bit for a while and hopefully that um, comes back. No? No? no. OK. All right. So I'm on my way to work at St Cuthbert's College. So a lot of the things that I've learned from dealing with Joe have actually helped me in some of my teaching. Yeah. Mm, here we 
good day. Bye. Yeah, earlier on, I was just quite fascinated by the way her mind had, had lost language, not just um, words, um, spoken word, but writing and sort of symbolic language as well. And and um, also just seeing how, you know, it doesn't matter how hard someone wants to do something when they've got conditions in their, in their brain, whether it be what Joe's got or dyslexia or something like that. You just, you just hit walls. Paula, um, Paula. <laughs> Power. Yes. Yeah. Um, with um, with language comes power. Yes. 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 <laughs> People ask me all the time, what progress is she making? And I say, she's constantly making progress. There's always forward progress. However, the progress that we can, can see has not yet been significant enough to have a positive impact on what she's able to do. Her very, very clear goal is to get back to her job. I'm quite confident she'll get back language to a really good conversational level, but that extra academic stuff that she's gonna need to, to be a haematologist, I, I fear might elude her. When, when these trials and tests come along, you say so you you find out who you are, and you've just either got to roll over and give up, or you or you fight. She's certainly fighting, and and I'm trying to support her as much as possible, and be the I'm still trying to be the the man behind an amazing woman that I wanted to be before that I was when she was in her medical career as well. I want to. Go back to work. Joe's been avoiding going to the hospital. I guess it's hard to sometimes to think about work uh, at the same time. She desperately wants to get back there. I met Jo when she was working as a haematology registrar in this hospital. She was a, a trainee, so a junior doctor, not yet a consultant. And she chose to spend six months working with my team, which is a hospital palliative care team. She is incredibly courageous to come back into an environment where your colleagues are all doing what they were doing before and what you were doing. I mean, I can only begin to imagine what it might feel like coming back in, knowing that this was what she, where she would be. She'd be a consultant by now. <laughs> Yes. You're right coming in. Yes. It's yes. big, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. 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 Show me the you are a different person by the time you've become a doctor and worked in medicine for a while. You see yourself differently. It's probably not until it's taken away from you that you really begin to realise it. It's big coming back here, isn't it, Joe? Yeah. Yes. How does it feel walking back in uh, to this place? Hard. Hard. Yes. Um. Which was your desk? Yes. This one? Yeah. Have you been back in this room no. since it happened? Does your rubbish on the wall? Yes. <laughs> no. Oh, uh, yes. That's yours? Yeah. Oh, yes. That's yours? Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is this yeah. where you want to be back? You're not sure? No. You're not sure? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, yes. You think it's going to be possible with everything that... Uh, Don't know. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. You're still hopeful? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I want to speak at dawn. Um... <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you want to speak well enough? Yeah. Well enough to be able to come back to work? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That so it feels okay? Yes. Being in here, yeah. the thought of coming back here feels okay? Yeah, yes. But you'd need to be able to speak well enough? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What is it about work that you love so much? Um... Um... I love you. Love it. Yes. You love it? Yeah.
Why? Um. Um. Poor pug. Poopers. No, yeah. Um. Poor poor. People. Yes. You love the people. Yeah. This is Connor, one day old. Put your eyes open. It's an apple eats as well. Here we go. Who's that? Hello, Connor. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Thank you, see Mummy and Connor and Daddy. It's your birthday. Alright, sit up. Yep, further back. Oh yeah, I know what to do. I guess it's about three and a half years nearly now since um, since Joe had her um, cerebral hemorrhage and it hasn't been an easy time, but I guess we're constantly making forward progress. Come on, I'm gonna go soon. <laughs> I can see the change, I can see the movement, but I the word I'd describe it with is glacial. Since we last saw you, what's improved? Um, dry van, mm -hmm. yeah. And what's that like, being able to drive again? Yes, I like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where do you go? Um, kind of, uh, um, that way. Everywhere? Yeah. Yeah. No, not tickles. I don't like getting tickled. <laughs> All right, off the daycare. Yeah, Joe's got a much greater vocabulary than she would have had a couple of years ago. It's it's probably easier for her to access words now, though. Sometimes, in some days, in some moments, there are still those huge frustrations about not being able to find the right, um, right starting letter, or she was having a lot of trouble with December the other day. What? Park. 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 Down, Connor. I love you. Bye. I bat at work. I two time at work. One day and five day, half a day. Yeah, what's it like being back to you? Back day, yes. Back day is done. I love them, yes. Um, um, you love it? Yes, yes. What Jo's doing is reporting on blood films and bone marrows. She's looking down a microscope and writing a report on what she sees, which can give useful information to clinicians about what's happening. What an amazing achievement when people thought that it would be impossible for Jo to really get back to any kind of level of functioning. And given how incredibly determined she was to do that when everyone thought it was completely impossible. She's really done an incredible job to get this far. Joe being back at works, I guess from a financial perspective, has been amazing. We've been running it right to the bone for a long, long time. She can do a little bit more with Connor. Don't have to worry about taking him to a movie or, or getting takeaways once a month or something like that anymore, which we could never really do before. Oh, yeah. The hardest part with Connor was probably that 
Jo wasn't able to spend as much time with him as she would have wanted to. <laughs> when she first had the cerebral hemorrhage, obviously she was in hospital and rehab for yeah. a space of around three months, followed by time at home where she was just bedridden. Things that made the most difference to that were her getting stronger physically and not having to sleep as much was a, was a big deal. And then from about a year and a half ago, she started looking after him one day a week, and then it went up to two days a week. And that's, that time has allowed them to bond without me around. Hey. Hi, no, no, no. Uh, Mummy, so no. Hat on, yes? What are you most happy about at the moment? Monday is Tuesday is Connors uh May. Look Star Walk Cup Mat Roda. Yes. There's been a couple of things about Joe that just have never wavered and definitely haven't changed. Determination, that kind of coupled with the love of the job that she she was doing. And she's she's fearless in certain in certain environments. Yeah, I, I still am in awe of I, I say to her, do you do you really want to go out and try that on your own without someone you know there with you? I imagine if I was that person and couldn't articulate it, I would I would be hiding under my rock somewhere, but she's just out there and, and doing it. Wait that sure that man are pumping blood on island oh i know that but yes 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 <laughs> how do you think you've changed since the hemorrhage oh uh, connor is long on so passes to me Connor and Leon. Uh, uh, support, uh, so important to you? Yes, yes, yes. Attitude was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.